State of Mind is a science fiction adventure game that focuses on ethical issues such as surveillance and transhumanism. With a unique art style, an intriguing story and more mature themes, this sounds like it could tick all the boxes for a great sci-fi thriller. There's only one way to find out though, so let's dive in and find out. The story of State of Mind takes place in Berlin in the year 2048. You control a journalist by the name of Richard Nolan for the most part, although you do control a few other characters along the way. Richard is a man disgruntled with the path humanity is taking, and after an accident sees him wake up in a hospital, he goes home to find his wife and son missing. This all happens in the first 10 minutes of the game, and I won't reveal any more, but the story kept me invested throughout. It gets a little convoluted at times, and I had to keep track of a few different plot points at once, but I was engaged and loved the world it created as the story unfolded. It has a touch of noir storytelling at times, almost neo-noir if you will, with its dark setting, sinister undertone, but stylish backdrops, and story gets 16 out of 20. The graphical style in State of Mind uses stylized low poly 3D for the character models and full 3D environments. In terms of the overall aesthetic of the game, there are clear influences from movies such as Blade Runner or Total Recall, as well as video games such as Deus Ex. What I love about this though is how the developers have taken the best parts of these famous science fiction classics. The city of Berlin is shown to have both the high class, futuristic utopian feel for those with the social standing to be able to access it, but also shows the grimy underbelly of the city where those less privileged reside. It sells you an idea of a future fantastic, but instantly shows you that utopian and dystopian versions of the future are merely different sides of the same coin. What made a film like Blade Runner a cinematic masterpiece for me was how it showed the remains of the dilapidated and decadent buildings and features of the past with the high-tech skyscrapers of the future built around or on top of them. It grounded the setting and created a world that was familiar and alien at the same time. State of Mind follows a very similar path. For every hover car you see, you will find an old bicycle chained to some railings. For every artificially intelligent robot wishing you a nice day, there is graffiti scrawled across one of the walls, relics of the past existing in the future. This juxtaposition also applies to the game's graphical style. I like to think that the low poly style used for the characters acts as a metaphor for how anachronistic the human race seems in this futuristic world that has shot up around them. The game teases the future we all imagine with its flying cars and service bots, but then reminds us that the more things change, the more they stay the same. In terms of the audio, the music is very well suited to the subject matter. And the voice acting includes the talent of Doug Cockle, probably best known for his role as Geralt of Rivia from the Witcher series. God, what's this doing here? I haven't seen this card in years. Graphics and audio receive 18 out of 20. They should be back by now. The gameplay in State of Mind mainly consists of traveling between areas and interacting with characters, either through conversations face to face or via a hologram with a futuristic phone call. There are some dialogue choices to be made when conversing, but the decisions you make seem largely inconsequential to the overall story. There are also light puzzle elements to solve, such as piecing together news articles. There is no real combat involved and it's best described as a point and click adventure in that you interact with the environment around you, picking up objects for use later on in order to advance the story. It does feel as if the gameplay takes a bit of a back seat to the story at times, especially early on where you spend a lot of your time exploring your apartment and carrying out mundane tasks such as making breakfast and going to medical appointments. As laborious as this probably sounds, I must admit that I quite enjoyed it. It gave me a chance to acclimatise to this new world and get to know the characters that bit better. The slow pace won't be for everyone, and I did at times yearn to have a little more to do, but I also appreciated how the game's developers were clearly confident enough in the world that they had created and the story that they were telling to not feel obliged to throw an action scene at their audience every 10 minutes. You will find pin boards located at certain places which hold snippets of information and clues that you have collected so far so that you can keep a track of what's going on as you try to make sense of the mystery that is unfolding. 
Gameplay receives 13 out of 20. The controls in State of Mind are fairly simple, with the left stick controlling your character and the right stick your camera. A is your contextual button and the X button allows you to examine any objects that you come across. A press of the right button on the D-pad brings up your contacts list for making phone or cloud calls and pressing up on the D-pad brings up your inventory. Holding down the ZR button will allow you to run. The biggest problem with the controls is how clunky it can feel to move around. Your character has quite a large turn circle and this can make movement a little more cumbersome than it should be. Controls receive 12 out of 20. State of Mind costs £35.99 or $39.99 and for this price you are getting around 10 to 12 hours of gameplay and very little replay value. There are some in-game achievements which may prolong the experience for some, but the truth of the matter is that this game is very overpriced. There is a physical version available, although it seems to be, if not exclusive to Germany, at least more heavily distributed there compared to everywhere else. I managed to import a copy for around £25, which was a price that I feel much more comfortable paying. The eShop price is very steep and value receives 8 out of 20. To conclude, State of Mind is probably the first game I've reviewed where the score won't reflect the enjoyment that I had whilst playing. It's a flawed game for sure, with its clunky controls, limited gameplay and overly convoluted story at times, and the score will reflect this, but if, like me, you've ever wondered if androids really do dream of electric sheep, or been fascinated by Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, then you might find Berlin in 2048 a place worth visiting. Although perhaps, wait for a sale first. State of Mind received a switch-up score of 67%. Many thanks as always for watching, please remember to like, subscribe, click notifications, all those nice things that help us out so much, and as always, happy gaming. We are on the brink of success.